What's good with it, you guys? As you could tell, we got a new, some new equipment. Also, I am doing this on YouTube, so make sure you guys go check out the channel and check it up on YouTube. I will be hosting these live podcasts or these podcasts on video, so you guys can also see. Um, but I appreciate you guys. Again, it's your boy Charles with the unofficial review. No problem there. Sorry, I just had to adjust everything. Uh, but, yeah, man, it's been two weeks, and I apologize. I haven't been, haven't been hiding because of the Eagles losing. That's number one. Because they still got a chance to win the division. And I know you guys don't want to hear that. I personally think the season's over, but there's still a chance. Still a shot. But anyways, you know, I'm going <laughs> to... I'm going to go ahead and start off this, this episode with the Eagles. Um, like I, I've been telling you guys the whole time, you guys have been listening to the podcast, that they have not been impressing me at all. They haven't been impressing me, and that's why I've never started with them. Even when they were winning, I mean, there was just something about them that I wasn't impressed with. If you look at, if I go down the list of the Eagles' losses, most of them are within a touchdown. Tampa Bay, 27-21. Uh, Tennessee, 26-23. Minnesota, 23-21. Carolina, 21-17. Cowboys, 27-20. And they, except for, for last week's game, which was pathetic, might I add. They got blown out by 41. 41 points. And... Obviously, that's not something you want to see from your team who's trying to fight for a playoff spot. To the New Orleans Saints, who put up 48 points and look like a juggernaut. And to be honest, it's obviously it's between three teams as of right now for the best team in the league, and that would be the Saints, the Rams, and the Chiefs. And I've been a Rams doubter the whole season. But win or lose, because I think right now I would, I would rank them Rams, Chiefs, Saints. Even though the Saints beat the Rams, I think that the, the Rams, what they showed me against the Chiefs in a tough game, a high-scoring game, one with a playoff atmosphere, potential Super Bowl matchup, Jared Goff, Delivering the goods in a tough game, close game. I mean, it was it was one of the best one of the best Monday night games. If you guys didn't have a ch chance to check it out, it was one of the best games on Monday night that I've seen in a while. As far as competitiveness, because I mean, one of my favorite Monday nights, and it wasn't really competitive, was the Eagles versus the, versus Washington, where Michael Vick. First play of the game, 80-yard bomb to Deshaun Jackson. And I think he he had about four touchdown passes and two rushing touchdowns. And now his his jersey, cleats, football are now sitting in Canton for that game, Canton, Ohio. But man, I, I'm off I'm off track. Let me let me go back. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody who's watching the show. Again, this is the unofficial review with your boy Charles Wilson. And, you know, I appreciate your guys' support. You guys probably won't be listening to this on Thanksgiving. But, you know, again, I appreciate you guys' support. Um, you guys can listen to this on the Anchor app, A-N-C-H-O-R, Google Podcasts, Apple iTunes. Just remember that it's out there. You can find it. But, you know, again, any way you guys listen to it, again, if you're on the Anchor app, make sure you guys hit that applause button. Uh, if you like anything I'm saying or if you agree with what I'm saying, because, you know, that tells me, okay, I need to give more, I need to, I need to have more topics of this. So, again, I, I appreciate you guys, but stay tuned. we got some big things coming up for the unofficial review. Um, obviously including this video so I appreciate you guys are on YouTube make sure you hit that subscribe button as well as the notification button on the bottom
just so you get a notification when the videos are uploaded so if you guys are more visual um, if you guys are more if you like to see more visuals then have that but if you guys just want to have the podcast and you're at work and you want to listen to the podcast make sure you download the anchor app or again google podcast apple itunes spotify um, the show is on all of those platforms and you'll be notified when a new episode comes out uh, if you're on the anchor app there's also a a button over there to subscribe or to donate to the channel helps us get all these this cool equipment so again i appreciate you guys for showing your support and we're going to keep this thing going, hopefully in a better schedule, more consistently. Uh, but, yeah, let me let me go back to the Eagles. Because I missed two weeks. Lost to the Cowboys 27-20 at home on Sunday night. And I thought it, I thought the game, I thought we were going to win the game once I seen the black jerseys. Because usually the Eagles bring those out in primetime games, usually on Sunday night. Uh, and they, they usually win. I'm curious to see what their record is when they have the black jerseys. Uh, but I was very confident going into the game. Uh, I, I didn't like that everyone was picking the Eagles to win the game. Uh, and obviously, if you guys watch the game, they just the the way it ended was was horrible. Um, it was about nine seconds left. Carson zero zero, zero timeouts. Carson Wentz decides to throw it in the middle of the field. Uh, to Zach Ertz, who's clearly like 10 yards short of the end zone. Zach Ertz lateral, laterals the ball back to Golden Tate. He gets tackled. Obviously, you can't stop the clock, so game over. Um, and, you know, when you're in those type of situations, obviously, if you throw in the middle of the, the field, it's going to have to be in the end zone because if you don't make it, time is out. You're not going to have a chance to go. Um uh, you're not going to have a chance to go up there and spike the ball. And, again, I, I don't know if it was Carson Wentz not thinking correctly or if it was Doug Peterson not telling him, hey, this has to go to the end zone. Either way, both of them are at fault. Horrible loss within the division. Um, so, right now, the Eagles are 1-1 one one in the division. It's sitting at 4-6. and six. And I, I'm not going to get into the Saints game because they just whooped us down the field. Eagles quit. They quit. I don't care what anyone said. They quit. I mean, they, they tried to make it a competitive game with, with that one touchdown drive, but the offense wasn't getting it down. And the defense, the injury-riddled defense, didn't have a shot at stopping Drew Brees, who might be the hottest quarterback in football right now. Maybe a MVP candidate. I mean, the, the Eagles secondary is decimated. There was no way they were going to stop Mike Thomas. Um, so you got here. Here are your defenders that are out. Rodney McLeod starting safety. He's gone. Jalen Mills is out. So obviously he's not playing. Ronald Darby torn ACL. He's out. Uh, Sidney Jones started the game, but he got hurt. In the game, didn't come back. Um, Avery Maddox or Avante Maddox, the the corner slash safety out of Pitt, who ran a four three, he got injured in uh, on one of those touchdown drives by the Saints, and you know he didn't come back. It was his knee. Razul Douglas, who's another one of the corners. He got injured in the game near the end. I mean, the Eagles' secondary is in shambles. The only person that's been playing every game consistently is Malcolm Jenkins, which you would expect that uh, from Malcolm Jenkins because he's, you know, he's just a tough guy, and that's why I think Eagle fans like myself gravitate towards him. He's tough. You gotta, you gotta have the toughness to play in Philly. Going to linebacker. I mean. Technically, we only have two linebackers right now that actually get playing time. And that's Jordan Hicks, who the Eagles most likely will not re-sign in the offseason. And I don't blame him because he's had, since he's gotten the league, every year he's played, he's gotten, he's gotten better and showed that he was one of the best middle linebackers in football under the radar. Um, and then last year he tore his Achilles, and this year he just looks like his – He's shot. 
mentally and physically shot. Getting lost on plays, um, you know, not making tackles, just not playing smart football. I don't know what's going on. He got he got the bug in his head uh, where mentally and physically he's just not there. So I think the Eagles let him walk unless he unless he's willing to take a lot less than you know the average middle linebacker because he's not playing like a linebacker that's that that wants to be the highest paid linebacker in football. Uh, Nigel Bradham has also he's played, but he hasn't played well. So he just got his contract during the offseason. He's gonna need to pick it up so he can show that he deserves that money. Uh, on the defensive line, our first round pick from last year, Derek Barnett, out. Shoulder, shoulder surgery, he's out. Probably our best defensive pass rusher, Derek Barnett. He's he's been out since week four or five, and you could tell the depth on the defensive line is just not there. Uh, Timmy Jernigan, who has some weird incident in the off season where he injured his back, and the Eagles had to basically restructure his contract to take some of the money back because of some weird activity he was doing where he injured his back and had to have back surgery. Uh, he just got activated this week, so he'll be playing his first game this week. In week 11 or 12, he'll be playing his first game this week in week 12. So, Jimmy Jernigan, I think that's a that's a big bump to the defensive line. Uh, Haloti Nana is just not the player that he was. And, I mean, he's been in the league for so long. I mean, you can't expect him to play at that same level on the defensive line, uh, getting pushed around. He just, he, you know, he's... He's on his last leg, and I know for a fact he's going to be retiring after the season. Uh, he co he contemplated retiring this se or before this season, but the Eagles, you know, he wanted to compete and see if he had a chance for another Super Bowl. Which at this moment in time, if you look at the Eagles, it just doesn't doesn't look likely. So, I mean, just the defense defensive line is just I mean the whole defense it's a whole bunch of injuries. Uh, but again, it's no excuse. Because most of the games we lost were within seven points, obviously, again, except for the last game against the Saints. Um, and that's all I'm going to talk about with the Eagles. They, they have to win this next game versus the Giants this, this week um, on Sunday. Because the Giants look like, ah, I'm not going to say they look like they're catching the try. They beat, they beat the Niners. I mean, they're still the Niners. So we can't say they're catching their stride or they're gaining momentum. They beat a weak team, and the Giants are a weak team. Um, so the Eagles need to take this win to like go 2-1 in the division and still have a shot of winning because, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4. So four of their next six games are going to be within the division. They still have the Giants. They have Washington twice. They still got the Cowboys. And then they got the Rams and Texans. Now, these games are winnable games. If you guys know, the Giants, obviously, they're not the best team as of right now. Uh, Washington just lost Alex Smith. And with Adrian Peterson's new comments as to, and I'm not even getting to that, but if, number one, why, why the hell are you saying that on the radio? If you guys don't have, if you guys didn't hear what he said um, about his, you know, about his parenting methods um, after he got suspended during the 2014 season, I believe it was, or 2016 season. Uh, make sure you guys go check it out. He was on Bleacher. He was with Bleacher Report and said something about his parenting, which just, again, you know, after you just got out of the situation where you got suspended, you would think that you would, you know, stay away from those type of comments. Obviously, he did not. So, um, who, who knows if he'll be available. Uh, but the Redskins look like their momentum moving down. Now, I hope that the Redskins win today because uh, then that would, you know, bring the division... Well, actually, that'll push the Redskins a little bit further up uh, in in the division standings. But you know, there's no way in hell root for the Cowboys. So, still got them. Uh, Dallas. We played the Cowboys on December 9th in Jerry World. Usually, that series goes that the away team usually wins the game. So I'm thinking that the Eagles split with them. Um, again, those are three winnable games within the division. The Rams. I don't think the Eagles have a shot against them. Uh, in L.A., 
December 16th, unless unless something crazy happens and the offense is just running the ball, Doug Peterson decides to actually run the ball. Uh, it just it baffles me when you try to do a play action and you haven't ran the ball yet. Um, the, the defense, nobody's taking a step forward. They don't believe you're running the ball. And that's exactly what the Saints did. And Carson Wentz was under fire the whole game because he kept dropping back. Uh, so the Rams, I don't anticipate the Eagles winning that game. The Texans is a tough game. Luckily for us, it's at home. And, you know, I mean, Deshaun Watson, uh, DeAndre Hopkins against our secondary, that's a scary matchup. But, again, as a team, we could beat the Texans. And then we got we have one more game against Washington to end the season. And that game might be vital for the division. So, Eagles, again, winning, uh, I mean, 4-6. or six, Nobody wants them to be 4-6. or six. If they go to the playoffs, they better hope they don't run into the Saints and the Rams, which they will have to uh, if they make it past the divisional round. It, it just doesn't look good. Unless they show something and, and start clicking on all cylinders. But even at that, our secondary and our defense is way too hurt to be stopping either of those offenses. But anyways, uh, let me go to college football. Because there's, there's actually a few games in college football that I want to talk about and most people will have their eyes on. So looking here, obviously the, the two big games with playoff implications, or there's three games with playoff implications, and I'm not counting Clemson because they're playing South Carolina and they should whoop South Carolina. So I'm, I'm anticipating Clemson being a lock already to win this weekend. But you have Michigan Ohio State, which is on Saturday. And I'll be watching that game personally. Um, so there's Michigan Ohio State, which has, again, big playoff implications. If Michigan loses to Ohio State, I don't think either of them make it. I don't think there's a Big Ten representative if, if, if Michigan loses to Ohio State. I don't think Ohio State could climb back up to the rankings Ohio State's had some mediocre to poor performances in wins lately um, against Nebraska. And they had another one, let's see, yeah, against Michigan State. So their last three games, Ohio State has been a big loss to Purdue, 49-20 to Purdue. They beat Nebraska, oh, sorry, the past four games. Sorry, past four games. So they lost to Purdue, 49-20. They beat Nebraska, who's horrible, 36-31 at home. Uh, they played Michigan State 26, uh, 26-6. And then this past weekend, they played Maryland and won in a shootout because I believe Maryland went for two points at the end, and they didn't get it. So the game, the score ended 52-51. to Oh, actually, yeah. So they did go for two. Maryland, the quarterback actually missed a receiver who was wide open. Uh, right in the end zone on that two-point conversion. And it was crazy because he could have made the throw, but he was it wasn't like he was getting tackled when he threw it. I think that he panicked and threw it, and it was just off target. So uh, Maryland should have beat them, uh, but you know the quarterback just couldn't get it on the target. And, again, I don't think Ohio State should be – should be uh, – in, even if they beat Michigan, I think that they will go to the they'll go to the playoffs and get whooped by either Clemson or Alabama, and that's just not a, a good look for them. I think Michigan has a, one of the better opportunities to beat Alabama, just because history will tell you that Alabama has trouble with running quarterbacks, and Shea Patterson again is is that he's a dual threat. He could throw, but I mean most people haven't really seen that side of him yet. Um, Obviously, he's mobile, and Jim Harbaugh is playing to his strengths. But don't don't get it you know don't get it twisted. Shea Patterson can make some throws, and I think that Michigan is one of the teams, one of the only teams. I think uh, Alabama will whoop Clemson, but I think Michigan has a better chance at beating Alabama than any other team minus Oklahoma. Um, yeah, that score points too. So that's the one game, Michigan versus Ohio State. And then the second one is Notre Dame versus USC. And you guys got to remember, USC hasn't been that great this year, but 
that's a rivalry game. You know, going going all the way back, at least from, in my days. I mean, it, it goes further back than that, but it goes back to the, the Matt Liner getting pushed in the end zone by Reggie Bush. You know, people say, hey, that's that's illegal. You know, Brady Quinn and, and all those guys. <laughs> USC versus Notre Dame is a rivalry game, and it's at USC, so you can't just anticipate that Notre Dame is gonna is gonna whoop USC. Uh, again, when it comes to rivalry games, anything anything can happen. And to be honest, I wouldn't be surprised if the USC beats Notre Dame, and I'll be watching that game closely as well. Uh, and then lastly, you got the Iron Bowl, Alabama Auburn at Alabama on Saturday. I don't think, again, this is a rivalry game, so anything can happen, but Alabama's just on a roll. Auburn, I just don't think Auburn has it this year. Uh, but then again, anything can happen. It's a rivalry game, the Iron Bowl, you know, crazy stuff happens every year. And, you know, I would be happy if Auburn beat Alabama, but who cares? Like, that, you know, Alabama's still going to make the playoffs. It's the Alabama Invitational. Um, so... You know, there's no point of arguing over that. And then there's a few other games that, that people are going to be watching. Uh, obviously, these teams are going to be hoping that, you know, one of those three games, there's an upset. So you have Oklahoma, West Virginia, which I think is, is, is the biggest game tomorrow. And that one is going to be a shootout, I believe. West Virginia and Oklahoma – have been playing great all year, and you know I, I like West Virginia, uh, but I also like Oklahoma. And the reason why I like West Virginia is because, you know, against Texas, they didn't play to to tie or they didn't play not to lose. They played to win, and that two uh, that that two point conversion obviously propelled them to make the moves that they are now. So West Virginia, I'm excited to see that game. It's at West Virginia. Um, Washington State versus Washington. I think this is where the upset comes in because it's obviously it's the Pac-12. So if you guys know the Pac-12, you've been listening to the channel. Pac-12 cannibalizes itself every single year. There's not one time where <laughs> the only Pac-12 team that made it to the playoffs was Oregon, and that's because Oregon was just probably one of the better teams. Well, they were head and shoulders better than every team in the Pac-12. Um, I believe they they might have even they still might have lost a game to, to Arizona, but Arizona beats beats teams in the top ten, top twenty five every year. They played Arizona again in the Pac twelve championship game and blew them out by I think it was like fifty. So and that was you know obviously with Marcus Mariota beating Jameis Winston in the semis and then they are getting whooped by Zeke and Cardell Jones in the in the national championship game. Not a great day for the Pac-12. <laughs> uh, let's see what other games you got. I mean, you got LSU, Texas A&M, but I mean, again, uh, I think I think Georgia will have a better shot of making the playoffs than LSU, even if LSU beats Texas A&M. Georgia's already ranked ahead of them, and Georgia has to play. I believe they still have to play Alabama in the SEC championship game. Yes, and that's on December 1st. So if Georgia beats Alabama in the SEC championship game, I think both of them make it. I mean, assuming that Alabama wins today. Both of those teams are already locked for the SEC championship game, so that's, that's not a problem. But, again, I hope to see some good football this weekend. I'm more excited about college football than I am about the NFL for obvious reasons. Um, but, and I'm, I'm going to end on this topic because I don't want to keep you guys too long. Keeping me from, from, from cooking, cooking more. I still have to cook my uh, cornbread. Um, I just made my macaroni and cheese today. So, I mean, there's a lot of food here. You got to start, you got to start off the, the day whether it's Thanksgiving or not, with a good workout, with a good run. And that's what I did today. And, you know, you feel good. So now I'm ready for the turkey, ready for the ham. 
macaroni and cheese, cornbread, um, greens, uh, and all the other stuff that comes with it. So, um, you know, again, happy holiday or happy happy Thanksgiving to all you guys that are that are listening and also watching on YouTube. Uh, you know, again, I appreciate you guys. It's the unofficial review with Charles Wilson. But this last topic is pissing me off. Uh, I, had to, I had to be honest. It's pissing me off. And I've been done with it for a while. And I might even talk, I might have talked about it already on the podcast. But this is, you know, it's starting to get to the point where I can't, I can't control myself uh, when it comes to something like this. So... I don't know where to start. So, so I, as you guys know, I'm a Sixers fan, and Sixers everything, Eagles, Sixers, Phillies. I mean, I don't really watch baseball, but again, my team would be the Phillies. I'm not a Giants fan. I'm not an Oakland A's fan. Um, I don't like any team from the Bay, including Golden State. But. I gotta talk about Markel Fultz. This, this is, uh, this this whole experience with the Markel Fultz has been a disaster from the beginning. Uh, if you guys have been following, so I mean, this yeah, it's been literally a train wreck since the beginning. You can see the trains coming together. Um, and I was never a big Markel Fultz fan. Uh, when my dad was talking, asking about him, because obviously the Sixers traded up to get him, they were at number three, and they traded up to number one to get Markel Fultz. Obviously, I went to ASU, so Pac-12. Uh, Markel Fultz went to Washington. My dad was asking, hey, you know, have you seen this guy play? I was like, I've seen him play. I mean, he looked good, but I didn't, I didn't like him. He was on a bad team. He didn't play the whole season. He played about 20 games. They didn't have a good record. The Pac-12 record was terrible. And he was a good player scoring a lot of points on a bad team that, were, that for the most part, was always down. So, yeah, you could score 25, you know, 30, and all that. But he didn't show me anything to be the number one overall pick. And, I was, again, the, the Sixers traded up for him. And... They look like fools because Washington took took the third overall pick, took the first rounder, which is potentially a lottery pick this year. Let the Sixers draft Marco Fultz, and then they drafted, obviously, the name uh, escapes me right now, but they drafted Old Boy from Duke. What is his name? Let's see. So they, they draft, well, if you guys know who I'm talking about, the name escapes me right now, but they drafted old boy from Duke. Um, the problem with that was, obviously, the dude from, when I was playing with the Celtics, just, you know, had a great season. Probably would have been rookie of the year had it not been for Ben Simmons and, you know, Donovan Mitchell both having great seasons. Because right behind them was this guy. And hold on, let me let me get this guy's name. My computer died, so I'm going to have to get this guy's name on my phone. Jason Tatum. Jason Tatum. My apologies. Jason Tatum. Jason Tatum is a baller. And he's been, obviously, last year he was one of the best players on that team. If not the best player, because Kyrie and Gordon Hayden were out. But he's been one of the best players on the team. Carried them all the way to the the, the East Finals uh, where they ran into LeBron and took them seven games. T took them seven games. So, I mean, you, you, this guy Fultz says he, he's going to go see a shoulder specialist or his, his agent texted, you know, Elton Brand, the GM of the Sixers, and, and – um, Brett Brown say, hey, you know, we're going to go see a shoulder specialist. He won't be available for practice this week or games. How do you tell your coach and GM that? That's ridiculous. 
Not to mention, he hasn't been playing all that well anyways. The dude's mentally shot. And I think that the Sixers need to trade him, trade him immediately. Get him out of town. I mean, there's not much you could get for him now. He's damaged goods. I think it's... I think injury is a concern, yes. And you definitely have to be concerned with injury, but mentally, obviously there's there's a mental those those mental yeah, those mental hurdles are more concerning than the physical ones. I mean who's to say that he, even if his shoulder is good that he you know he he'll be a great player. I think the Sixers need to get rid of him and to, uh, I think I seen the report today or late yesterday that he's re he reportedly, again, reportedly requested a trade, which he could go ahead and get the hell out of town if he wants a trade because Sixers don't want. And I, as a Sixers fan, you could, they're gonna they're gonna start turning on him and turning on him quick. You don't you don't pull stuff like this and then you know and then just expect to come to Philly. I think he knows that. I think that he knows Philly Philly fans aren't gonna their patience is already at zero if not or I mean if it's probably with you know at ten out of a hundred, if not at zero already. And with me it's been a zero since last year. Him not playing last year already told me everything I needed to know. Um, you know, it just even with that triple double he got in the end of the season, it didn't really tell me much, but he could go. Get your bags, pack them up, you know, you can spend a whole year with the shoulder specialist or a shrink or whoever is going to help you put the ball in a basket because pump faking at the line and then juggling, juggling, how do you do it? He is juggling the ball like he's at the free throw line. For those that are watching the video right now on YouTube, he's juggling the ball and then shoots it like that. Didn't even set. Look, he just juggled right into a shot. So, I mean, now it, it's starting to get embarrassing. I mean, everything he's, all these new things he's doing at the free throw line. Um, you know, if he's requesting a trade, I can guarantee the next time he plays uh, in Philadelphia at home, they're going to bull. And they, again, Sixers fans already know football, uh, basketball. So T.J. McConnell's going to get more love than him. You know, um, obviously the first-round rookie that the, the Sixers drafted, he's out for a peanut injury. Or a peanut, no, sorry, a peanut allergy. Uh, and I shouldn't be laughing, but it, it just sounds funny when you, your guy's out for the season for a peanut allergy. Apparently the story behind that was the Sixers, uh, Zaire Smith, who they drafted out of Texas Tech. He, um... He had a peanut allergy uh, reaction when the Sixers gave him um, some food. I believe it was sesame seeds. Uh, he didn't know. The Sixers didn't know. So when he ate it, he had to have like immediate surgery. And I was asking to keep him out for the rest of the year. I heard he lost around 20 pounds. So it's pretty serious. Uh, but they're saying that he should be good to go for next season. Uh, but yeah, obviously it's a big hit when you're expecting a rookie to contribute. That doesn't have it happen. Uh, but their, their other number one pick uh, out of Wichita State, the shooter, Sh Shummer, uh, has been playing solid minutes. And, you know, I think the Sixers are a team to watch. Again, it's, it's going to be between the Sixers, Boston, Toronto. So those are the teams to watch in the East. Same, I mean, pending Boston actually playing together as a team. I don't think any team could beat the Warriors in the West. I know the Warriors lost four straight, but they're still going to win the whole thing this year. You know, that's not going to sway me on anything. They might have some issues, but I don't see any team beating them unless it's Boston. And that's if Boston's clicking on all cylinders. So I think they, they have the depth and the physical, you know, talent or the players that are physical enough to play defense and score with with uh, with Golden State, so you know, those are my takes right now. Again, it's it's, it's Thanksgiving. I got I got some stuff to do. People are blowing up my phone. 
Um, so I'm going to go ahead and, and end the podcast here. Again, this is the unofficial review with your boy Charles Wilson. Make sure you guys download that Anchor app. That's A-N-C-H-O-R. All these podcasts get sent to Google Podcasts, Apple iTunes, Spotify, again, uh, uh, a plethora of other podcasts, um, sources or options, apps. Um, big shout out to our sponsor, King of the Game, sports media right here, if you guys can see it. Best in high school sports highlights. Make sure you guys follow them on Twitter and Instagram at KOTG Media. Again, it's at KOTG Media on Instagram. And Twitter, you can also follow them on YouTube. I'll put a link in the description below. But if you guys aren't watching the video, then you can follow them on uh, YouTube at King of the Game. Uh, but again, this is the unofficial review. We got some good stuff coming up. Hopefully, you guys like this video. Give me some feedback. Leave some comments. Leave a like button. Again, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel. Um, and if you guys are trying to look for it, if you guys are on the Anchor app. If you go to chuckitup.xyz, we'll have a link to the video as well as the, the YouTube page so you guys can subscribe and also get the notifications. But again, I appreciate you guys for everything, all the support. Um, if you guys want to get on the show, make sure you just hit me up and you know we'll make it happen. I have some, some good stuff coming up as far as entrepreneur talk and um, life talk. So we'll get those going. Again, I keep, I keep saying that, but... Obviously, we're, we're getting some stuff going. I want those ones to be on video. That's why we've been waiting so long. Uh, we have the equipment to do it. So, you know, obviously those are going to be coming up pretty soon. I'll have a schedule out pretty soon as far as how consistently we're going to be putting these podcasts up. I like doing these things. And um, obviously the consistency will bring in more followers, more supporters, and more people that we can have on the show. So, again, we appreciate all the support. Uh, appreciate all the love. Just remember that knowledge turns action into power, and we'll see you guys next time. Peace. Chokey beat.